there a word from the Lord? Get your phone, your iPad, your notepad and pen, and of course, old school, your Bible. Let's sit back, relax, as we dig into the Word of God. Yes, there is a word from the Lord. Well, hello everybody and welcome once again to this special time in God's Word. I'm Dr. Sheldon D. Newton coming to you from Jesus Christ Seven Ministries International located right here in beautiful Nassau, Bahamas. We're so glad to have you with us. We want to welcome all of Jesus Christ me members and partners and all of you who are listening to us in the Family Islands, in the Caribbean, um, in America, Israel, Japan, China, England, Australia, wherever you're listening, Europe, wherever you are, we're glad to have you with us. Shall we pray together? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word. We ask you to give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of your word. Teach us because we want to be taught your ways. We thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's look again, please, in the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. If you remember, we are studying the subject concerning spiritual things. We have been looking at the entire book of 1 Corinthians, and we are now in chapter 12, dealing with spiritual gifts or spiritual manifestations. And we are looking in particular right now at the manifestation of the gift of prophecy. Now, if you remember when we talked about this, I'm looking here for my glasses, but when we talk to regard to this particular gift or this particular manifestation, we've said that the, the gift of prophecy, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 3, is inspired utterance, speaking to men to edification, which means to build them up, exhortation, which means to encourage them, and comfort. And so that's what the Bible defines the simple gift of prophecy as. Therefore, that is what we have to go with. Now, that's different from the ministry of the prophet or the prophetess. Any believer can be used to prophesy. That does not make him or her a prophet or a prophetess, okay? But when it is a person standing in the office of the prophet or the prophetess, that is a ministry gift, not a spiritual gift. That's a ministry gift. And there's a difference between ministry gifts and spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts function through ministry gifts, but spiritual gifts also function through any spirit-filled believer, you see? But that does not mean that the person who the gift is functioning through is necessarily in the uh, ministry gift category. The ministry gifts are the fivefold ministry of the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. And these are ministers of the gospel. These are not just people who prophesy uh, and walk around and say, I have a word for you and I have a word for you. Really a whole lot that I have a word for you all day and all the time is not the Lord, okay? Because uh, to be quite honest with you, um, God aims to lead his children by his spirit. And then he will use um, prophets uh, and prophets prophetesses sometimes to confirm what he is telling a person but my brothers and sisters he does not want us dependent on other people having to tell us what the Lord wants us to do because quite frankly he wants to lead and guide us that way himself now he may confirm what he's been dealing with us in our own spirits about uh, he may confirm about what he said to us but he leads us by his spirit. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, Romans 8, 14, they are the sons of God. Praise the Lord. Now, um, in 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, let me just read this again. In verse number, mm, verse number 4, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God, which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man, to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. We've already covered that. To another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another faith or special faith by the same Spirit. To another the gifts of healings by the same Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another uh, discerning of spirits. To another diverse kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of tongues. But all these work it that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he wills. Now, we have already said that there are 
all various categories, three different categories of these gifts. There are nine gifts. Um, the categories are, three of them are revelation gifts, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, discerning of spirits. Three of them are gifts of inspiration, or in gifts that inspire. They are the gift of prophecy, diverse kinds of tongues, and the interpretation of tongues. And then three of them are uh, power gifts. And they are the gift of special faith, the working of miracles, and gifts of healings, all right? And so now let's get back to what we were saying concerning the gift of prophecy. Um, in our last set of lessons, we've been talking concerning how to judge a word from the Lord, how to judge personal prophecy, or how to judge when a person may even get up in church and say, thus save the Lord, all right? And so we have been looking at these, and we said to you that there are eight of these. We've already covered the first five or six. Number one is the prophecy in line with the Word of God. And you may say, why do we keep going back over these? It's because it's very, very important, especially the closer we get to the return of the Lord, the more important these steps for judging personal prophecy and for judging prophecy come in, the more important they are. You say, why? Because Jesus said that in these last days, there'll be many false prophets that will come up. Many false prophets shall arise, you see? And so we have to be able to know when someone is speaking from the Lord and when they're not speaking from the Lord. And so number one, is it in line with the written word of God? Now if it's not in line with the written word of God, if it's contrary to the written word of God, right off the bat, that's not the Lord. All right? Number two, how is the prophet or prophetess living? How do they treat God's people? Um, we are supposed to judge true and false prophecies and true and false prophets by the fruit that they bear, meaning their character, not by their gifting. All right? Anybody can say, thus saith the Lord. Anybody can act like they have something from the Lord. But not everybody can live a holy and a clean life and treat people right. All right? So Jesus said, how will you know? He said, judge them by their fruit. Not their, not their gifting. Their fruit. Their character. You see? Are they walking in the fruit of the Spirit? According to Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. And then number three, is the prophecy in agreement with what God has placed in your spirit? When it's a, a, a personal word, it should always be a confirmation to you of what the Lord has been trying to deal with you in your own heart, in your own spirit about praise the Lord. Remember this statement. Now, it may be a statement that some people may not want to hear, but listen to me. Remember this statement. Under the Old Testament, not everybody had the Holy Ghost living on the inside of them. As a matter of fact, the Holy Ghost would come upon the the kings, the prophets, the priests, and upon those who he would especially call to do something, like Gideon, or like those who are called to um, build the tabernacle, uh, um, the Spirit of God will come upon them to do a particular work, or come upon the prophet to prophesy and to minister, or come upon the king to stand in that office and so forth. But the Holy Spirit did not live within those people under the old covenant, you see? He didn't live within them. Um, so they had to go to the prophet to get guidance. Under this new covenant, we have every believer has the Holy Ghost living on the inside of us. Every believer has the Holy Ghost living on the inside. And we can be led by the Holy Spirit in our spirits. And that's what God has ordained it to be. He said that the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Proverbs 20 verse 27. Searching all the inward parts of the belly. God wants to lead us and he wants to guide us. He has moved on the inside of us uh, 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 by the Holy Ghost, by the spirit of God. And he wants to lead us and guide us himself. And so now he does not lead in this new covenant through the ministry of the prophet or the prophetess. What he does is bring words of confirmation through them. You see? Praise the name of the Lord. But he leads and guides us by the Holy Ghost. Praise the name of the Lord. And so, uh, and again, you know, this is where you have to go into um, some detail again because some people say, oh, well, the Lord ain't lead me to go to church. Well, that's not the Lord, okay? Go back to number one. Is what you're hearing in line with the written word of God? If it's not in line with the written word of God, then it ain't God. It's that simple, okay? So um, we have to be led by the Spirit of God through the word of God. Now, um, um, number three again, is the prophecy in agreement with God's place in your spirit? Number four, does the prophet or prophetess have a proven track record? Um, do they have a track record for accuracy? 
how accurate are they when they prophesy does it come to pass all right very important number five are the other season um and senior men and women of god saying the same thing and like we said you can always go if a person gives you a word and you're not sure whether or not it's the lord you can always go to your pastor you can always go to your um someone who you know knows god better than you um has been walking with the lord probably longer than you a seasoned man or woman of god and find out if you should listen to what was said if that really was the lord and so forth and they can help to give you guidance based on the word of god someone came to me say i'm the i'm someone prophesying tell me someone wake him crap on me and all I had to do is give them the word why because usually when you hear people prophesying that kind of stuff a whole lot of times it's not true and even if it is true God don't want his people to live in fear okay he doesn't want you living in fear and if you read um, Luke 10 19 where Jesus said behold I give unto you authority to trade on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you you don't have to fear no devil if you read Isaiah 54 17 no weapon form against you will prosper and every tongue that rise against you in judgment you shall condemn uh, you don't have to fear no devil praise the name of the Lord and so you have authority in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to command every devil to go to command every demon to go you have authority in Jesus name and you don't need to fear that kind of thing so all I did was give that particular person who came to me saying someone prophesied done someone wake him scrap on him I said here's what the Word of God says: stand on the Word of God in other words don't worry about who may be wicked what you know you stand on the Word of God God will protect you and that wicked one will not be able to touch you glory to God number six is there manipulation and greed in the utterance is there manipulation and greed in the utterance is it about is the utterance about controlling you or merchandising you in other words what is the word doing is the word you're being given given putting you in bondage or put or is it setting you free is it putting you in bondage to the person bringing the word or is it setting you free hallelujah and uh, um, you have to know whether or not the word is bringing you freedom or bondage um second corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 um is very powerful it says uh now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty glory to god god wants you to walk in liberty his truth will bring you into liberty god is all about you walking in freedom holy freedom precious freedom not putting you in bondage to any man or any woman and uh, uh, making you think that if you if you obey god and you don't obey them then a curse can come on you and there are that those forms of manipulation going on where people will be told if you don't do what i say this is what can happen to you and if you don't do what i say listen if it is a corrective word that tells you uh, um, and it's right on where it says listen you're committing adultery and if you don't stop God says such and such and I'm you better listen if it's a word uh, uh, where you're committing uh, uh, um, where you're lying all the time and they say listen the Lord tell me to tell you if you don't stop this lie and such and such can happen to you you better listen but if it's a, situ it's a situation where people say the, um, the Lord say um, you must stay in this church and if you don't stay in this church a curse can fall on you listen don't listen to that kind of thing it's Especially if that kind that church is a church that manipulates and keeps people in bondage and keeps them tied down and keep them thinking that that uh, um, the only way you're gonna grow spiritually is if you be here you know listen you should be going to a church you should be faithful for, to a church you should have a church home but it should not be a place where you're manipulated it should be a place where you're able to go and freely worship God serve God serve in that local assembly and have freedom about you there are things I've heard and things I'm hearing concerning how people are manipulating people seemingly in the name of the Lord and some of it is really I mean it's really really wrong and you'll be held accountable uh, um, those pastors and so forth who's do, who are doing that you'll be held accountable to God for every single time that you've taken advantage of his sheep you have to remember the people that we have been called and anointed to serve are not people they're not our people they're God's people you know sometimes people pastors will have the heart to say child these are my people no they're not they're God's own 
than Jesus' sheep. We are his under shepherds to serve his sheep until he comes. And so we need to remember that and we don't need to manipulate them and force them to do things that we want to do by telling them the Lord say. You know, like some will say, the Lord say, you are, if you want this case left of your life, you got to give a thousand dollars and all that kind of stuff. We don't find no premise for those things in the written word of God. So we need to stop it. That's just that plain and it's just that simple. All right. And so we need to love people and we need to teach people the word of God. Teach people, people how to live by the principles of God's word and God will bless them and God will bless us for being faithful. Number seven is the prophecy drawing you closer to the Lord and his will or is it drawing you to the prophet or prophetess and their will? Is the prophecy drawing you closer to the Lord and to his will for your life? Or is the prophecy drawing you closer to men and to being in bondage to men? You see, a real prophecy, the real spirit of prophecy uh, uh, um, will draw you closer to Jesus. Hallelujah. It'll want you, uh, um, a person giving you the word of the Lord will be aiming to deal with you with regard your relationship with God. You hear me? It will be about your relationship with God. Uh, uh, um, prophecy, true prophecy, always glorifies the Lord. And I want you to mark that down and I want you to remember that. True prophecy always glorifies the Lord. All right? And so I believe that you understand that one. So we'll move to the last one so we can end this particular uh, um, um, series on prophecy. Um, and then we will move into next week talking concerning the power gifts. Now you may say, well, what about diverse tongues and interpretation? If you remember, we've already addressed that some as we've taught on this area of the gift of prophecy because tongues with interpretation equal the gift of prophecy. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 14 and verse 5 tells you that. Uh, um, tongues of interpretation equals prophecy. All right, so uh, um, prof tongues of interpretation. With the interpretation, it does the same thing that a prophecy does. Aims to uh, build people up, comfort them, exhort them. All right, um, the last one here is does the prophetic word lift up Jesus to Christ or does it lift up man? Let me read something to you here from the book of Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19, hallelujah to the Lamb. And I want to read to you what the Bible says here. It says in the book of um, Revelation 19 and verse 10, John said, and I fell at his feet, talking to, about an angel, to worship him. And he said unto me, see thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Watch this. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. All true prophecy points to the Lord Jesus Christ. All true prophecy points to Jesus. All true prophecy um, makes Jesus wonderful, shows how wonderful he is. All true prophecy glorifies the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's another way for you know, to know whether or not it is really the Lord at work. Who is getting the glory? 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 And if you keep these uh, um, eight principles in mind, when it comes to these personal prophecies, and when people saying the Lord say, it will help to steer you and keep you clear and keep you in the path God has for you and keep you away from the spirit of error. I trust that that has blessed you. Listen, if you want to learn more concerning manifestations of the spirit and um the ministry gifts of the spirit and the anointing of god i encourage you to get a copy of my book i'm um, tapping into the anointing of god this book will help you it will open your eyes to manifestations of the spirit and how the spirit of god moves and show you even how to find your place in the body of christ your place in the kingdom so go to www.sheldondnewton.org and you can get your copy of tapping into the anointing of god i trust you enjoy this teaching today if if you um, don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, just simply pray. Just simply pray and mean it from all your, with all your heart. Just say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. You are that Savior. I believe you died for me. I believe you were buried. I believe you rose again. Right now, I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. 
Wash me in your blood from every sin. I confess my sins and I ask you to wash me from every sin and make me your child. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, email us please and let us know. You'll see our email address on the screen in just a moment. God bless you and remember Jesus Christ is Lord and divine love flows. So glad that you joined us for this time in God's word today. And we want you please to go ahead if you want to see other videos coming to you from Jesus Christ Center Ministries International, subscribe to this particular page. Like us on Facebook at Jesus CCMI. And by the way, if you have prayer requests, please email us. Our email address will be on the screen in just a moment. Email us and let us know how we can pray for you. Until we meet together again around God's word, remember, Jesus Christ is Lord and divine love.